In this video, we're going to talk more about the Fermi inversion factor in our absorption equation, the Fermi inversion factor. And remember, in the so in the last video, we found that the absorption as a function of the photon energy is just equal to this term we derived previously, which we're now calling alpha naught as a function of the photon energy. And you can find the expression for this in previous videos. Uh, and then this is all multiplied by this, what's called the Fermi inversion factor. So FV, uh, or the Fermi factor for the valence band, minus FC uh, as a function of photon energy, the Fermi factor for the conduction band. And collectively, this thing is known as the Fermi inversion factor, Fermi inversion factor. Now, if you want to get the gain as a function of the photon energy, you can instead invert the Fermi inversion factor. And some people do this, um, but I don't find it terribly, uh, terribly illuminating. I don't know. I, I, I think working with the absorption coefficient, at least at this stage, is much more intuitive. So now we have to figure out how exactly these Fermi factors uh, depend on the photon energy. Because in the last video, we said that, well, uh, we've got our conduction band. We've got our valence band. There's some band gap in between. And the energies that we're, uh, that our Fermi factors were evaluated for are E2 uh, and E1. But we need to figure out what E2 and E1 are as a function of the photon energy. So also just recall that uh, Fv was uh, 1 over 1 plus E to the E1 minus EF in the valence band over KT, so the quasi Fermi energy for in the valence band, and FC was just 1 over 1 plus E to the E2 uh, minus EFC over KT. And so now we just have to figure out what E1 and E2 are as a function of the photon energy. And we can, uh, we can see if we stare at this for a little while that the photon energy is just equal to the difference of E2 and E1, right? Because we're sending in incident electromagnetic radiation of a certain energy. And when that energy is equal to the separation E2 minus E1, we're able to get a transition. So we expect our photon energy to just be equal to the difference of these two. And since energies are fundamentally relative in uh, everything that we deal with, I'm gonna choose this point to be E equals zero. So I'm going to choose the valence band edge to be E equals zero. So this will just let us, uh, let us use this as a reference and more easily figure out, okay, what's E1 and what's E2? Well, we know that E1 and E2 can both be related to the momentum, uh, the momentum or the crystal momentum K at which this interaction happens. And so uh, E1 with respect to this zero that we've defined is just negative H bar squared k squared over 2m hull, or the effective mass of the hull. And again, this is just the, you can think of this as the kinetic energy of the particle that's undergoing this interaction. And this was also assuming that these bands are parabolic. So assuming that we can approximate these bands as parabolas, which isn't always true, uh, but it's true most enough of the time for it to be useful. Um, and similarly, we can write down an equation for E2. It's just uh, this band gap energy plus uh, this difference, this kinetic energy. So it's this band gap plus h bar squared k squared over 2me. And if we subtract the two and make a substitution for the reduced effective mass, uh, we'll get that the photon energy is just equal to eg plus h bar squared k squared over two times the reduced mass. And remember that the reduced mass is just one over the electron mass plus one over the whole mass, uh, the inverse of that. And now we can just solve this equation for k by moving the band gap to the other side and multiplying and dividing by some stuff, and then plug that back in to our equations for E2 and E1. And if you do that, you'll get answers for E1 and E2. So now we have uh, E2 as a function of photon energy will just be equal to our band gap plus uh, the photon energy minus the band gap times the reduced mass over the electron mass. And similarly, E1 as a function of the photon energy 
slightly simpler. It's just negative e photon minus e g, that's a g, uh, times the reduced mass over the whole mass. And so if you felt so inclined, you could now just plug these back into our Fermi factors, Fv and Fc, which you can plug back into this equation, uh, into the Fermi inversion factor, and you'll get a pretty complicated, nasty looking equation. But what's most interesting about this Fermi factor is that it can be negative, and it can also be zero. Uh, so it can be negative and it can also be zero. And so what's most interesting mathematically about this is the zero crossing. So where this function crosses the zero point, and that's just given by the numerator. So if we plugged everything into this Fermi inversion factor and we combined all sorts of stuff, uh, basically do a bunch of algebra, you'll end up with uh, an equation that looks like this or an equation that can be put in this form. Um, e to the e2 minus e1, which is just equal to the photon energy. So I'm gonna make that substitution. So e to the photon energy minus delta EF, which is the difference between the two Fermi levels over KT minus one. And then this is divided by some ugly uh, denominator. So some ugly denominator, but this is the numerator. And so this tells us when our function goes from being positive to being negative. And so delta EF is defined as our conduction band uh, for me quasi Fermi level minus our valence band quasi Fermi level. And so if we take a little take a look a look a little closer look at this, let's say we want to plot this as a function of our photon energy. Initially, what will this denominator be? So let's assume that EF is going to be positive, and in general, it's going to be either zero or positive. Um, so if our photon energy was zero, we have e to the minus uh, delta EF over KT, or e to the minus a positive number. So this is going to be less than one, minus one. So this whole quantity is going to be negative. This whole quantity is going to be negative. And so we don't know what the Fermi, inf Fermi inversion factor is because it's got this ugly denominator, but we know it's in the range of plus to minus one because it's a probability minus another probability. So it has to be between minus one and one. Uh, so it's somewhere in this region. So it's somewhere, uh, somewhere in this negative region in this below, uh, below zero. So this is our Fermi inversion factor, let's call it, which is FV minus FC. So that tells us that for small photon energies, so for small photon energies, we can actually get negative absorption. We can get negative absorption or we can get gain. Uh, or we can get gain. But then at some point, uh, when our photon energy is equal to this delta EF term or our Fermi level splitting as it's called, uh, that's where our crossover point happens. So at this location, when E photon is equal to delta EF. Uh, so at this point, the Fermi factor becomes positive. Uh, I, I really should draw these at, with the same height because it's uh, somewhere in the region of plus one to minus one. So let's just make that explicit. This is one, this is minus one. We don't know where exactly it is, but it's somewhere in this region. And so for larger photon energies, so for E photon greater than delta EF, we're always going to get absorption. And so whether we get absorption or gain is determined by this quantity, the Fermi level splitting, delta EF. And so this is a central quantity of importance in optoelectronics. And this is what we're gonna spend the next few videos exploring. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Uh, if you like the video, also give it, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.